Hello, Lakes Community Church, and welcome to another one of our daily pastoral messages to encourage you. Let me start with a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, with all of our burdens, all of our struggles, all of our fears and concerns, and we lay them at your feet. We know, Lord, that you are pure and perfect and true in all that you do, that you lead us with your great and powerful hand. And Lord, we just want to look to you for comfort, for guidance, for peace in all that we do, in all of these circumstances of our lives in this season, and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today, our verse comes out of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. We're going to look at verse 10. In verse 10 of Isaiah 41, he says this, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow. Well, that's a great verse. Great comfort, great peace. I've got six points I want to present to you this morning, just really quickly, really simple. But the first one is this. God tells Israel seven times in chapters 41 through 44 of this book of Isaiah that they should fear not. I think he wants us to stop fear. He wants us to trust in him. Our eyes may tell a story that we, if we're not looking to him, that we can't believe that he could deliver us. But he can. He wants us to trust in him completely and wholly. Seven times to Israel. Do not fear or fear not. I think we should take that to heart. In every circumstance, in every situation, we may not know the outcome, but we know that he, has, he is the one who has promised that we should not fear because he is in control. He is the one who upholds us with his righteous right hand. Point number two, that God is greater and is able to overcome all of our fears. That's a promise. We should trust in the promises of God. He is able to overcome every single thing that we see in our lives that appears as if we should fear it. We should fear him, meaning we should trust in his power, his greatness, his love, his awesome creation that he's made and the judgments that he brings but we should not fear anything in this world we should fear him and fear him alone let's not rob god by fearing something of this world but rather put our trust our hope our confidence directly in him and let him show the victory over every circumstance in our lives point number three god seeks to calm our fears with the knowledge that he is the one that goes before us he is the one who assures us of his victory over all circumstances in our lives. Whatever circumstances we're going through, we have his promise that we should not fear, but trust completely in his deliverance. Trust completely in how he will bring about his purposes in every circumstance. It may not be the outcome that we would have drawn up on paper or wished or even prayed for ourselves, but he has the victory. Whatever happens in our lives, he's the one that delivers us. He's the one that can overcome every single one of those circumstances. Point number four, God will give us his strength in our weaknesses. God knows we're weak. He sees our weaknesses. We shouldn't try to hide them or compensate for them. We should turn them over to him. We should admit before the throne of God in prayer that we have weaknesses and that we need to trust completely and wholly in him. And I would ask you to think about that today. Where you see yourself weak, know that the Lord wants to show himself strong in all that he does in your life, in my life, in all of our lives. Point number five, God will help us overcome all of these obstacles that are in our path as long as we are walking with him. He knows there's obstacles. He says he goes before us. He's already overcome every single one of those obstacles. So we should, when we see these obstacles, not think that God has forgotten us or that God is incapable or un, not, doesn't have enough power to help us over these circumstances. He's already overcome them. He's gone before us. He knows what we face and he wants us to face it trusting completely in him, showing himself strong to us through our weaknesses. So where you are weak, 
let him be strong and turn it over to God. And the last point, point number six, God promises to uphold us by his powerful right hand. We are his. He has called us his children. If we put our faith in Christ, he adopts us as his own children. Sons of God, we are called. And because of that, he upholds us in his righteous right hand. Think about the image of that. How powerful is it for you and I to see that he is upholding, he is upholding us by the power of his right hand? How strong, how powerful, how awesome is the strength and the beauty and the awesome grace of our God to uphold us by his righteous right hand. I hope today that you will put your confidence directly in him, looking at every circumstance through the lens that God has upheld us with his right hand, that he goes before us, and he charges us in every circumstance not to fear, but to put our trust completely in him. Be blessed in Jesus' name.